So how's it going today guys? Back here with another video. Today we're going to be ranking the top 5 promo pack drops this year so far in 2K22 my team. Um, obviously the 250k tournament's going on right now. Today's the next gen bracket. Yesterday was the current gen bracket. And uh, there's been some pretty close games. I mean, I really enjoyed watching the gin vs. Splash game yesterday. That one was really close. Obviously pretty unfortunate what happened to uh, Ty Debo. Everyone kind of knows about that, I think. Um, he's been playing well today, though, so that's good. I hope he wins uh, the next-gen bracket for Xbox. But, uh, yeah, anyway, that's been pretty good. It'll be interesting to see kind of how that plays out throughout the rest of the day. Um, do you have a pack I'm probably going to open up here really quick, and then we'll, and then we'll get into ranking the... Uh, top five promos i'm not going to be including like signature series drops or flash drops i'm just including like um promos that had just one pack drop so you'll kind of see what that is when we get into it so like for example um i'm not going to be including like any of the moments drops or just any of the pack drops in general that have had multiple drops throughout the year just ones that had one single drop that were kind of exclusive promos but, uh, yeah, I think that's kind of what we got going for the guidelines. Let's see if we can get anything out of this pack right here. I just got this from the challenge. A Dark Matter Luka pull would be pretty nice. I'm not going to lie. Ooh, that one did lag. Got a shaker. Please be an opal, man. That would be awesome. Jason Kidd coach card. And we get a diamond. Okay. So that means, uh... Gosh, who are the diamonds? I can't remember off the top of my head right now. Power forward. Lakers. Oh yeah, Julius Randle. So a non-signed Julius Randle out of that pack. Not terrible. I'll get his XP out of the way. Again, I haven't been playing the game too much. I've just been kind of doing... Been really busy with school again. Just been kind of doing uh, challenges for these free packs and stuff. Because I do enjoy opening packs, as you guys know. But, uh, yeah, not, not a terrible free pack there. I'll take that. But let's get into the top five promo drops this year so far. Coming in at number five, we have the Mystic drop. So this pack drop occurred in early November of the 2K22 cycle. And the pack odds were absolutely terrible. So, like, the Giannis's of the world and... The team acts of the world were going for multiple hundreds of thousands of MT at the time. They were two of the best cards in the game, though, for sure. And that kind of is what we're looking at. And I mean, they were just elite cards. They're very hard to obtain, of course. But when we start looking at some of the more affordable cards in this set, such as like a Diamond James Harden, who was under 100k right when the packs dropped, he was super good for the time. Draws and Petrovic was a decent sharpshooter. I mean, he definitely wasn't terrible. Not as good as Harden, for sure, but not bad. John Stockton, definitely not as good as John Stockton was last year, the Diamond. But then we get into the Amethyst. Dino Raja was super underrated at the time. I, I think he was really good at the time and just wasn't getting talked about. Eddie Jones, I mean, he's just an Amethyst shooting guard, and he was super cheap at the time, and he was a top five shooting guard at the time and a top 10 shooting guard in the game for a while after the drop which is kind of crazy given that he was an amethyst but he was absolutely elite DeJounte Murray was really good he was a um a slightly better version of his moments card that a lot of people were running at the time so he was another good uh card in that set there OJ Mayo wasn't very good he was kind of one of the only cards that wasn't in this drop but then we had um Wang Zizi here, and he was, I mean, everyone was running this guy. It didn't matter if you were competitive, it didn't matter, you know, what level of play you were really at, you were running this guy at center, and he was just a super good budget option, possibly even the best budget card of the year so far, and, I mean, was able to crack threes at a good rate, um, super easy to green release. He was better than the triple threat offliner award at the time, the diamond Rafe LaFrance, just a better version of him. So he was really good. Del Curry, I don't know, he was kind of mid. Fun fact, he was my uh, uh, best holographic pull of the year so far, which is kind of interesting. 
he was kind of just another another guy in the set, though, just like OJ Mayo, possibly. Well, yeah, I would say probably the two worst cards in the set overall. Sapphire Jonathan Isaac. This card was unbelievable. And, I mean, just the fact that uh, he was going for, like, discard value at the time, and he played, like, a card that was probably worth, like, 30k MT. And, I mean, he was hard to defend. Like, I remember at the time, just because of his height and that, he could shoot threes over people and... Just a really complete card for a Sapphire. He was a really good card in this set as well. And then Sapphire Troy Daniels. He was good as well for a Sapphire too. I mean, this is back when we were getting like really, really good budget cards. Now they've kind of backed off of that a little bit. But Simbular, you know, he was obviously just a cheese ball. I think he had like really bad lateral quickness in that. So it wasn't really usable in 5-on-5. Five five. But if you wanted to cheese with him in triple threat, I mean, you could definitely do that. So yeah, overall, man, this set was just unbelievable for the time. It comes in at number five on this list, and that is the Mystic set. And then coming in at number four, we have the Alter Ego and Alter Ego Masked sets. So we're just going to go over the masked cars just for the sake of the video. And um, yeah, man, I mean, these pack odds were terrible as well. And But some of the high tier cars, I mean, there was three high tier cars that were like top five or ten cars in the game and it, it, it was a really good pack draw first of all we had Dolph Shays who I mean he was definitely probably the best power forward in the game at the time when this set came out this set came out I think it was like October 30th so a week or two before the mystic set and I would say for the average player this card was better than that pink diamond Giannis just because of his shooting ability his defensive ability was pretty much up to par with Giannis, I would say. The only thing Giannis would give you is, like, height and then the ability to play lanes, which is only really necessary for really competitive players. So this Pink Diamond Dolph Shades was unbelievable, and he was going for over 100k for a little while, and for good reason. And then we obviously know this masked Kevin Durant was the best card in the game for quite a while. I mean, this card was just absolutely unbelievable. It was crazy that we got a Kevin Durant card this good, this early in the year, and just by a mile the best card in the game. And this masked version was going for like 600, 700 KMT for a couple weeks and was pretty much unattainable. But again, for good reason, because he was by far the best card in the game. Diamond Jason Terry, I mean, he wasn't terrible with the, that base 22 jumper. A little bit small, but this was still when you could get away with small point cards and he could hit threes from pretty deep. He got that base 22, like I said. So, a pretty good card overall. What was that Jason Terry? He was pretty cheap even when packs dropped. Alonzo Mourning. I mean, not necessarily the best card in the world. But, I still think he was pretty good on like the defensive end. And he would just give you that big body in the middle at center. I got him in draft mode a couple times. And he was getting like a lot of blocks for me. And some good boards. And... I mean, he was cheap at the time, too, so I don't think he was a terrible option. Definitely not the highlight of this set, but he wasn't bad at all. And then Diamond AK. This card was unbelievable, man. And he was going for, um, I think, right around that 100k mark. The masked version might, might have been a little bit more expensive when these packs dropped. But this card, I mean, what I, I can't remember what his base is. It's that same base as, like... Uh, Danny Granger and I think Glenn Robinson so just a really really cheese release I don't think he had the best three ball let's look at what his three ball is real quick here 83 three ball this one's boosted up a little bit but boosted up quite a bit actually let's look at this one so 83 83 point shot and uh I mean, he was just unbelievable at the time. So good on the defensive end as well. He was honestly just like a slightly downgraded version of Dolph Shays, I think, in the same set here. But both of them were top five power forwards in the game for sure when they came out. Dolph Shays, probably number one, like I said. And then we get into some of the Amethysts. I mean, Kyrie Irving was a usable point guard at the time. He was just pretty much the same as that Diamond, if not even a little bit better. And he was a good option at the point for the time. Same with Chris Paul. Um, I think Jason Terry probably better than both better than both of them, but they were good options if you were on a budget for sure. 
Bill Lambeer, uh, I don't know, he wasn't very good. He always has that terrible release, so not the best card in the world. Derrick Rose, he was one of the best rubies in the game, possibly the best ruby point guard in the game at the time. This card was unbelievable, just at rim running, and then he had that D-Rose release too, so even though he didn't have the best shooting stats or shooting badges, he could still hit a lot of shots. It's kind of crazy there's only one up on the auction house right now. Masked LeBron, um, he wasn't really the best. I mean, you could kind of rim run with him a little bit. He gave you that LeBron player build, which is always good, but not the best card in the world. Ruby Russell Westbrook, kind of just a, a worse version of that D-Rose, just going to give you that quick rim running. He's going to be able to dunk over people. Not a very good shooter, though, was this Westbrook card. But still, if you're on an extreme budget and you wanted to run D-Rose and Westbrook at point or one of those Amethysts, or, I mean, you were set to go at this point in the game. Kenyon Martin was not good at all. Um, Harrison Barnes, he, he was an alright Sapphire. I remember doing his XP. He kind of had a slow release, but I mean, he could still hit threes at a pretty decent rate and uh, was not a bad option at all. And then Big Z, Sojourner Sogauskas, um, he was he just gave the ability to shoot at the center position for I mean and he was probably the f one of the first budget options we saw for that of course we got Wang ZZ a couple of weeks after this but I mean he had terrible speed terrible lateral quickness but again using him in triple threat I didn't think he was too terrible so yeah that set overall was really good man and then the lock in Rip Hamilton definitely a sick card but not worth the lock in at all but. I mean, yeah, I think this set definitely deserves a number four spot. You could swap this and Mystic kind of around with each other. I think both of them are really good pack drops. But, uh, yeah, those are our number four and five spots in this list. And then number three, we have the Tis the Season packs. So, Steph Curry Opal was obviously unreal. Best three hunting point card at the time by far. These are when, it, when we got the first Opals in the game, too. This Opal LeBron I ran for a while. He was unbelievable. A lot of people were saying, oh, you know, he's not the best shooter and all this and that, but he was so cheesy, man. I just, I loved using him. I loved rim running with him. He could still crack threes pretty well for me. I know some people didn't love his release, but this card is really good still to this day, I would say. I don't think he's worth his price, but yeah, these two opals were obviously elite, and I mean, usually when we get our first opals in Dark Matters and packs, the pack odds are like absolutely terrible like no one's able to pull them besides people like the carlo stories and the troy dans of the world that open like a hundred packs you know but i mean there was a decent amount of people pulling these two cards which i thought was cool and then we get to the pink diamonds Kawhi leonard tell me there's none of them yeah there's got to be some one of if not the best shooting guard in the game at the time and he he was not like over overpriced. I mean, he was around that 100k mark, and I think he was well worth it at the time. And I mean, he just gives you that Ray Allen base, just elite defense. Such a good card. Still to this day, I think that Kawhi and the LeBron and Curry to a certain extent are all runnable if you want to run them. Blake Griffin, he he was kind of underrated at the time just because of how good this set really was, but he was still definitely a viable option at the power forward position. And then Rudy Gay, I mean, this card was in everyone's lineup, just like the Kawhi, I would say, probably was too, because they were just, Rudy Gay was even under 100k when these packs came out, like 70k, I think is what he was at, and this card was, a lot of people were saying he was better than LeBron at the time, so those were kind of the one and two at the small forward. I don't think personally, overall, he's better than LeBron, I think possibly on the offensive end, maybe. But, I mean, he just gives you that. Rudy Gay's jump shot is always so good. And just such a such a good card. Such Gives you that height. And, I mean, he's marked at 6'8", but he, his player model in game looks like he's about 6'11". I've heard a lot of other people say that, too. And This card was just unbelievable. Still runnable. I mean, we have an Opal Rudy Gay now, so there's really no point. But, and same with Kawhi. We have that Dark Matter, but, I mean... The Dark Matter Kawhi is super expensive, so I wouldn't blame you if you're still running this one. And then, yeah, so the pink diamonds in this set were absolutely crazy. And then 
Diamond Scotty Pippen and Diamond Michael Jordan were more than usable, especially if you're like a big Bulls fan or any of that. And I mean, they were super cheap at the time, like under 20K, because everyone was opening these packs right around Christmas. And not the best cards, but just more than usable. Like I said, if you're a fan of those 90s Bulls teams or just like those two guys. Diamond David West was one of the worst cards in the set. He wasn't very good at all. And then Amethyst Evan Mobley. This card was really, really good. Really, his only weakness is his low strength, so you could kind of bully him in the post. But other than that, this card was a perfect center. I mean, he could just wet threes from the outside, super easy to green release, super good stats and badges. This card was unbelievable and super cheap. I mean, there's a lot of competitive guys running this guy. So, you could not go wrong there. Rex Chapman, not the best card in the world, but pretty fun to use, I would say. Vince Carter was really good, but almost as good as his pink diamond that came out early in the year. So, for big Vince Carter fans, and then a lot of people really like that early use as well. I mean, he was a really good budget option. And then the Rubies, Rubies were pretty bad. Mo Bamba was bad, Rudy Fernandez was bad, so was Brent Barry, but... Other than the rubies in this set, man, all these cards were really good. And I don't think really many people are going to argue with that. So, the Tis of Season set comes in at number three on this list. And then number two, we have a little bit more recent pack drop. We have the Beasts set. So, all the Opals in this set are unbelievable. Anthony Davis, still very, very good in this game. John Morant, um still overpriced has been overpriced since these packs came out but i mean if you're a huge jaw fan and i mean he's just one of the better point guards in the game i don't know about still but at the time he was a top let's see probably three or so point guard i know we got some of those tall point guards right after this that kind of overshadowed him but really good card with that paul george base and just a really good card in general i would say Overpriced, though, for sure. And then Opal Giannis, everyone knows we're getting with Giannis. I mean, still going for 300, 400K. Just an unbelievable card. Um, you can, in theory, badge out uh, Pink Diamond Giannis and make him better than this Giannis. But I don't really think that uh, that's really worth it when you can just get this Giannis and he's going to be better at the base level. And then the pink diamonds in this set too, man. All going for like around that 50k mark. AK might have been a little bit more expensive when these packs came out, but this card was just another version of that, just a way better version of that diamond AK from earlier in the year. And pretty much everyone was running this card, and a lot of people are still running this card. Super fun card to use. Pink diamond Kristaps. There's people running this card currently in 250. A lot of people that I've seen running him, in fact. And... For a Chris Tapps card, usually his problem is that he's weak, but this card doesn't play like he's very weak to me. I mean, he doesn't really get bullied, and he's going to give you that cheesy shooting ability and that height, of course, and still one of the best centers in the game, for sure, is Chris Stapps. And then Pink Diamond Lamella Ball. When these packs came out, I'm going to say he was the best point guard in the game. I'm just going to go out and say that he's still top five for sure. I mean, you got guys like Cade Cunningham and Luka now who are definitely better, but... This card's still more than usable, and if you're a big Lamello fan, I mean, I still would recommend picking this card up if you really want to run with Lamello, because his price has gone down now, he's a little bit more attainable, and just a, was such a good option at the time, and still a good option. Diamond Josh Smith, one of the best budget power fours in the game, still to this day, I'm going to say. I mean, just gives you such good defense, gives you shooting ability, gives you a very good player build very good movement and just a really great card overall diamond dairy smiles another very very good card just a upgraded version of his ruby who people that i mean his ruby came out like way at the beginning of the year and people were using him for months and then when this card came out i mean just another unbelievable budget option in this b set bob sura diamond still I'm seeing him get ranked at like A tier and B tier on people's point guards lists. And the fact that he's as cheap as he is, I mean, this card is a budget player's dream if you need a point guard. Definitely a great pickup. Amethyst Jeff Green. Um, I was a huge fan of this card. I really had a lot of fun using him for XP. Um, 
really like his release and again just another really really great budget option at that small forward position Oscar Robertson wasn't very good probably one of the worst cars in the set Thon Maker I mean he was okay he's not as good as Thon Maker cards usually are but he wasn't terrible Isaiah Ryder uh, yeah I'm not a fan of this card I got him in like every pack so I don't even want to look at him um, Ruby Taco Fall you know, he just gives you that cheesiness with that 7'6", seven, 7'7", seven, seven height, however tall he is. And, yeah, man, this car is just a cheese ball. We all know what we're getting with Taco. Same with George Mears. Huh? Same deal, just cheesy height. And, I mean, that's what he's going to give you is just being taller, way taller than everyone on the floor. I mean, now we got Yao, so that's not necessarily the case anymore. But at the time, these two cars were just absolute cheese. So yeah, the B set comes in at number two. That set was unbelievable. And coming in at number one, we have the set that just came out a week ago. We have the Power Within set. So I got Isaac Bonga there. Been having some, well, I haven't used him yet, but I plan on using him a little bit for XP in that. Rui Hachimura and Thomas Bryant. Both viable options at the Ruby tier. Let's actually start at the top. We've been doing that with all of them. So Dark Matter Kawhi. Definitely overpriced, but by far, I would say the best shooting guard in the game. No question about it. Oh, sorry. Um, Dark Matter Shaq. I mean, we know what Shaq's going to give you. He's going to give you that huge body in the post. He's going to give you good defense. He's going to grab every single rebound, and he's just going to be a cheese ball. I mean, that's what we always get with Shaq. Really good card. Opal Scotty Pippen, one of the best value cards in the game. So many people running this guy in 250. Um, just such a good option. If you need a small forward and you're at any level of play right now, any skill level at all, go and pick this man up if you got the MT. He is well worth it. Cade Cunningham, best point guard in the game. Um, I don't know if Luke is better, honestly. I just don't. And I mean, I'll kind of have to watch a little bit more 250 and play against these two a little bit more but I think at right now I would say Kate's probably even better than the Dark Matter Luka that came out today just because of his height and his ability to shoot with the height I mean that is huge Pink Diamond Pau Gasol one of the best options at power forward right now if you're on a budget in the entire game um, just really really great stats and badges and I'm a pretty deep, big Pau Gasol fan. I was going to pick this card up. I haven't yet, just because I haven't really been playing. But this card is unbelievable, man. That, just such a good option at that power forward position. Darren Williams, kind of one of the bad cards in the set, not the best. Lance Stevenson is really, really good. I've been playing against him at draft a little bit. and He's hard to defend, man. He's got that base 107. He's a cheesy shooter. He's really good uh, at moving with the ball in his hands. Really good dunker. Just a super good option. And I mean, for his price, you cannot go wrong with Lance Stevenson at all. Diamond Bulbo. There's got to be some Bulbos. Come on now. Definitely overpriced, but I mean, you're getting one of the best power forwards in the game. And I know he's a 94 overall, but he's definitely one of the best power forwards in the game. So if you want to go out and pick this card up, I do not blame you at all. We all know what Bowl Bowl is going to give you. Amethyst Steven Adams, just going to give you a big body in the post. He's going to give you that hilarious card heart there. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you really can't go wrong with him. If, you, if you're on an extreme budget and you just need a big body in the middle, he is not a bad pickup at all. And then Isaac Bonga, a top five point guard in the game. And there's no question about that. I mean, I know that he's cheap. I know he says he's a 91 overall. But just his height and his ability to move and shoot and defend with that height. I mean, he is he's unbelievable. One of the best value cards in the game, if not the best value card in the entire game. His Amethyst Isaac Bonga. And like I said, these two rubies are usable as well, too, if you're on extreme budget. So the Power Within set, by far the best set we've gotten this year so far in my opinion I mean the B set is not far behind but yeah man some of these promos we've been getting this year have been absolutely elite tier level and uh, you know just we've gotten some really good cars this year it's been pretty impressive so 
yeah, I think that about does it. Um, that was a fun video to make. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you watched all the way through, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys in the next video.